Hello, welcome to another book report. Uh, an interesting one, not for everybody, but uh, I enjoyed parts of it. Uh, Everything for Everyone, The Radical Tradition That is Shaping the Next Economy by Nathan Schneider. So, in a nutshell, uh, interesting survey of different uh, cooperatives and uh, democratic um, economic institutions uh, and movements, um, political movements. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of interesting stories. I had no idea how many and how widespread cooperatives were in the U.S. economy. Um, even today, a significant portion, I forget the exact number, uh, but a shockingly large percentage of the American economy is actually made up of cooperatives. Um, and I did not know that. I mean, I did know that credit unions were growing and I knew. Um, but and actually, that's kind of a counterexample. In general, cooperatives have been shrinking, mainly due to lack of uh, information. But books like this will change that, I think, a little bit. Uh, anyway interesting survey of a lot of people and organizations. Uh, I wish the author was a little more critical. Uh, one of the people in particular that he showcases uh, needed a lot of criticism, I think, and got none. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to read, I think, first paragraph. So, yeah, this was, I've, I had heard of this organization before, but this was one of the more interesting organizations that he takes a look at. So he, this uh, um, uh, group of cooperatives actually in Spain called Mondragon, this remarkable network of worker co-ops emerged under the shadow of Francis Fra Francisco Franco in the 1950s. Uh, through the guidance of the one-eyed priest, Jose uh, Mari, Maria Arenzenderiata, I think. <laughs> Sorry about my Spanish. Or simply Arizmendi. Ariz, it's a system of factories, schools, banks, retailers, and more, all owned and governed uh, by the people who work in them. It's a beacon of possibility the world over that democratic business can thrive employing high high tech and large scale though it has yet to be outdone or replicated um, honestly the uh, the exploration of this uh, group Mondragon is a reason enough to pick the book up um, the uh, the founder of this the one-eyed priest um, has a few quotes here he says uh, it has been said that cooperativism is an economic movement that uses the methods of education. This definition can also be modified to affirm that cooperative, cooperativism is an educational movement that uses the methods of economics. Actually, he wrote that. Um, uh, I, I really like that in the sense that uh, it fully, and, and it's part of what I like about the idea of co-ops is that it embraces capitalism and the private market and says, hey, we can thrive and do things and still be democratic internally and care about all stakeholders and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, I'm not saying that would work for every business, you know, of course, but um, for a lot of businesses, it's a great model. And I thought that was an interesting piece. Um, okay. Yes, build an alternate economy. One nineteen third full pair. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Basically, basically, he's 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 reviewing this guy, who, effectively stole money. Uh, from banks. I mean, he rationalized it, but it was it was just theft. And, you know, it's not like every bank is a bad person. They didn't even make the money, right? They, this is not like a central bank. 
This is not anyway. So basically, this theft and and now I'm going to read here. He came to refer this as his quote public action close quote the theft of money from banks. All along, he'd planned it that way, a spectacle, but one that could create networks for other projects. Quote, this is not the story of one action, close quote, he said. Quote, it is a process of building an alternative economic system, close quote. Uh, that is the height of rationalization and hypocrisy. So you're, st you're, you're not going to create an alternative anything by stealing from the current economic system and then using that money within the current economic system. <laughs> Come on, give me a break, you know. Um, oh, my nose has a funny look at that spot. Anyway, uh, sorry about the nose aside. <laughs> anyway, the, the author was not critical of this person at all. I mean, in fact, he sort of was um, kind of looked up to him almost. You could tell reading between the lines. And I'm like, this guy, you know, yeah, he's got some nice ideas. But, you know, his actions are uh, heavily rationalized and illogical and hypocritical. Give me a break. Um so that, that section was very disappointing, and the author needed to really take a step back and get a little more critical. Um, and, uh, yeah, I kind of liked, you know, I, I, I am going to read this paragraph because it's interesting how the cooperative model keeps the Associated Press, uh, pushes the Associated Press to, to report, uh, to be factual. Um, and I thought that was interesting. I also didn't know the AP was a cooperative. Uh, it's one of the oldest co-ops in the, in the U.S., actually. So the, the, the Associated Press, the AP, allows its members to reduce the cost of reportage, um, giving them access to reports from more than 250 teams around the world. The wide range of political outlooks that its members hold ensures something as close to neutrality as journalism can hope for. It's an overlapping consensus that inclines towards facts. The company's business model depends not on virality, virality, or clickbait, unlike most customer-facing publications, but on trustworthiness. It does what many news organizations claim to do but can't quite accomplish, insulating news gathering from news selling. So the AP owners, when they talk about... Um, uh, bu -bu 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 the company's business model... Da -da -da -da, uh, Unlike most customer, or no, oh, where is it? Oh, it's members. So the members of the co-op are actually uh, the news organizations that we tend to see. Although you'll you'll often, if you read the newspaper, you'll see you know AP on there on certain articles. They'll just reprint the AP directly. Um, but anyway, I thought that was interesting that because the cus the members of the co-op, the AP, are all selling news and have a wide variety of um, political uh, persuasions and outlooks and editorial slants. Uh, that drives the, the, the co-op itself to be very neutral and just report the facts. Um, so uh, I, thought that was, I thought that was interesting. And uh, also ties into the idea that I had no idea how many co-ops there were in the U.S. and around the world. Uh, I knew there were a fair number, but I didn't know it was quite as extensive as this book showed. Let's see, last paragraph of 205. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so this, this, this was fascinating. This is, this was a couple people, um, uh, trying to uh, uh, economically empower communities in the Deep South. And, um, and here he's talking about uh, a Confederate flag campaign to take, to change the, uh, to take the um, Confederate battle flag out of one of the state flags in the Deep South. 
and uh, Akuno, one of the activists trying to actually change things on the ground, pacing back and forth over the grill, led the discussion, quote, I think with some of this Confederate stuff, that's a distraction. Is that really our agenda? Did we define it or did the media define it, saying that this is within the limits? Close quote. He'd been saying as much to Chokwe Antar. Uh, Akuno wanted to keep the focus on the co-ops, the assemblies, the, and elections. Real counterpower, backed by self-sufficiency. And then, uh, again, quoting um, uh, somebody else, though. Quote, nothing don't change whether the flag comes down or not, close quote, said New Orleans housing activist Stephanie Mingo from the other side of the picnic table. Quote, there's still going to be red, white, and blue, close quote. Now back to Akuno, quote, I'm not a fan of the Black Lives Matter thing, because to be honest with you, they don't. Your life did matter when you were a valuable property. You were very valuable at one point in time. We're not valuable property anymore. His pacing, close quote, his pacing took him and his gaze back to the grill where he flipped over a piece of chicken. My argument is to tell other black folk, let's start with the reality, um, which leads us directly to the last quote before I comment at all. Uh, 224. So Ed Whitfield doesn't get the same starry-eyed look at the thought of basic income proposals as the techies do. He co-directs the Fund for Democratic Committees and its offshoot, the Southern Reparations Loan Fund. A big man with round, dark glasses who likes to play exotic musical instruments, Whitfield talks about the future with stories about the past. Once in a conversation with uh, Callie Akuno and Jessica Gordon Nembhard, I heard him point out that when their ancestors shut off slavery and demanded 40 acres and a mule, they wanted the means of production, not the means of consumption. They wanted a hand in shaping the economy, not just a portion of its output. To keep their freedom from getting snatched away again, they knew they had to be owners. That paragraph, combined with some of the other criticisms of people actually working on the ground to improve poor people's lives, um, is very powerful and compelling to me. And uh, is... A, Another reason why I'm not a fan. I mean, eventually, someday, something like <clears throat> universal basic income, you know, might be a good idea. But I, for me, it's way down on the list. I think a guaranteed jobs program uh, is way more important. And, and, and first and foremost is increasing ownership, increasing entrepreneurship, uh, teaching uh, economic literacy to everyone top to bottom uh, on the economic uh, uh, heap um, from an economic perspective, top to bottom, you know, for the, the, from the poorest to the richest, everybody should be learning basic economic skills um, and uh, how to thrive and accumulate uh, ownership in our uh, economic system, you know, which is a mixed economy, but is basically capitalism um, with, uh, with some essential socialism thrown in. Um, and, you know, I do want a little more socialism, but I still think capitalism needs to be the primary driver of the economy. It's, um, it has so many benefits, <clears throat> but people need the knowledge, uh, resources, and opportunities to thrive within it. And we deny that to too many people in our society. And uh, paragraphs like that, um, I think, show that uh, a lot of people know that and are working on it, and I'm very happy about that. Um, um, but I, I do think it's fascinating that uh, the symbolic stuff gets all the press, and, but, the, but the real work is at elections, co-ops, ownership, <laughs> entrepreneurship, actually owning things right um that's that's the key um uh, 40 acres and a mule right uh just having a, a right to a slice of the output uh still keeps you relatively powerless right what really matters is having a slice of the productive capacity being a partial owner 
That's key. Uh, we just need to ex expand, continue to expand the franchise uh, from the poorest all the way up. Okay. Anyway, uh, enough grandstanding. <laughs> uh, interesting book. Um, you know, uh, I, I would recommend it. Um, I would recommend it for most people. Uh, shows you a, a side of the economy that is much larger and um, much older than I think most people, including myself, realized. Um, like I said, I wish the author was a little more critical of some of the people he's des uh, um, describing, um, but, uh, but uh, very interesting. Anyway, um, happy reading. Until next time.